are you, Benny? Hi. Hey, I want to talk to you. You don't have to knock yourself out doing this, Christine. Oh, well, you're wandering the line by tonight. Ah, uh, we, darling, not just me. I'm going to cut you in. I'm going to give you a piece of the action. Do you really mean that? Well, I'll have to work it out, of course. I've got to see my accountant and Margot. Your sister's got enough to do with a talent agency. Now, don't you worry about it. Leave it to me, darling. Yes, I'm from Mr. Nethercott. Is that Mr. Hudson? Wayne, someone to see you. Uh, tell him I'm busy. He's from Mr. Nethercott. Oh. Oh, I'll come out, Bernie. Excuse me, darling. Look, I'll tell you what. You get changed and I'll uh, take you back to the flat. Hmm? Mr. Novikov's a little surprised, Mr. Hudson. Oh, what about? About you starting up a Baccarat game without telling him? Well, what does he know about it? Over your restaurant at the junction? You're starting a Baccarat game. Well, what if I am? You should have told Mr. Nethercott. Mr. Nethercott's got an investment in Baccarat. Are you trying to frighten me off? No, not at all. Mr. Nethercott's very happy to go into it with you. He wasn't asked. You've got a very short memory, Mr. Hudson. Have you forgotten how Mr. Nethercott helped you out once? I remember he lent me money at 20% a week. You didn't have to take the money, Mr. Hudson, and six for five's the usual. He's had his cut. He's not coming in on this one. No, you don't want to cause trouble. You tell him. Now get out. You're being very silly. Get out. Finance. Miss Marlowe, please. And Marlowe? Wayne. Wayne, I'm sure Mr. Nethercott would never have said a thing like that. Wayne, there must be a misunderstanding. Don't make threats. I'm going into his office now. I'll sort the whole situation out. <sighs> yes, that'll be fine. I won't have a cocktail till then. Bye. Wayne Hudson's making trouble. Well, if we let him get away with it, Mr. Nethercott, It'll give everybody else ideas. There'll be Baccarat games opening all over town. I don't wish to know about it, Miss Marlowe. I thought you ought to know about the situation straight away. You heard me. It's up to you and Gregory Watson to attend to such details. Do you understand me, Miss Marlowe? Ah, look, Wayne, I've got to talk Please, to you about... Please, Bernie, later. I'm ready. I'm oh, coming, honey. I'll just get my coat. Tell my sister I'll be back later today.
Are you for? Yeah, Dr. Pope, two slugs out of it. Let's go. I should be inside. You might have it. Any help? We'll soon find out. Mr. Larson, do you feel well enough to come out of headquarters and then buy a few photographs? Really, Mr. Roger? Nothing. You fellas can knock Inspector Buchanan, could I see Miss Hudson, please? Uh, yes. It's just a very bad time. There's been a murder, Mr. Chapman. Margot, this is Inspector Buchanan. Good afternoon, Inspector. I'd like Bernie to stay. Drink? No, thank you. I'm sorry to disturb you at this time, Miss Hudson. Anyone been arrested? Not yet. I came here mainly to sort things out in my own mind. Now, your brother lived here. Well, you could say that. Oh, actually, he spent most of his time with Christine Martin. Sit down. And what was their relationship? Constant companion, Time Magazine called it. Who knew about it? Well, the flat was in her name, but the killer still knew where to go. We didn't even know the address, Inspector. It was a uh, new location. I see. That means he was probably being followed. But he didn't actually make a secret of it. No. Your brother owned this house? Yes. The business? Father. Uh, you have a share? Through my casting agency. So you own it now? No. Well, a friend of Wayne's, Don Fraser. He's got an interest in it. How much? I'm not sure. You see, a couple of years ago, Wayne was trying to get the business off the ground. You know, the club, the restaurant. Well, he needed money fast. Things were tight at the bank, so he borrowed money from a, a man called George Nethercote. Oh? You heard of him? Something. The interest rates went a little high, I believe. Sky high? Oh, Wayne was covering the interest, that's all. Anyway, Don Fraser came along, put money into the business, got him off the hook. Fraser's rich then? Seems to be. Where can I find him? I don't know. He uh, moves around. Well, let's get this straight. Your brother was in financial difficulties until Fraser came along and rescued him, is that right? Nethercott had him tied up in knots. You know Nethercott? Enough to keep out of his way. Do you care to add anything more to that? Why don't you look in your records? I'm sure you'll find something about him there. I'll admit the thought had occurred to me. Well, good day. I'll see myself out. I want to run down on Nethercott. Dig deep. Everything you've got. It's being done. Oh, the girl Christine mentioned his name. Yeah. It seems that a man representing Nethercott called in on Wayne Hudson. That's all she knows. Presenting Nethercott. Well, I don't know how far that'll get us. She thinks she can identify him. Yes, if we've got the mug shot. Yeah, the big if. Well, I'll see how she's going. Oh, and by the way, uh, I asked for any possible mug shots to be sent on the wire from Sydney.
How's the Mr. Universe file? Mm. You're not upset, are you? Nope. Would you sit down for a minute? Oh, sure. I'm glad you're here. I couldn't talk to him. Yeah, I know how you feel. Do you think I'm cheap? Hmm? You know, Wayne setting me up in a flat and all that. Were you in love with him? Oh, no. But I liked him. I really liked him a lot. He'd been around, Christine. Knew that. And it suited me, you know. He could, he could look after me and... Sounds like the old rebound. Oh, yeah. Who was he? No one. Happened about a year ago, but really hurt Mr. Root. Kim. And I, I didn't know what to do and, until I met Wayne. Oh, you'll be all right. Got to go with it. Ah, that's for me. King Fudge. This file. An allegation that Nethercott imported a gunman from Sydney to kill a club owner. Allegation? Wasn't it followed up? There was only one witness to the shooting. He died. A hit and run car accident. And that was that. Anything else? Oh, the usual standover bit. Nethercott lends money at exorbitant interest rates. Back of our clubs, you know, things like that. If he isn't paid, somebody moves in and takes over. And if it comes good, somebody moves in for a piece of the action. Everybody knows Nethercott's behind it. But nobody can prove it. Anyway, browse through that lot. I'm going to call him. I don't get it. You just said we can't prove anything. Well, he'll expect a visit. If somebody doesn't come, he'll keep his guard up. I don't want that to happen. Where are the police, Gregory? I thought that was the last of your worries. I like things neat. Now, you work it out. You call on Hudson? Hudson phones Anne. I don't think he would have kept that to himself. Hudson dies. Where would they be coming? Here. Now, where are they? I wouldn't get in a sweat about it, Mr. Nethercott. I'm not sweating. Johnny's on the plane back to Sydney. He operated solo. There weren't any other alibis to fix. Where are the police, Gregory? Probably busy with Hudson's bird. They've got it down at headquarters. <laughs> Maybe they think she put the finger on him. Maybe you'd better worry that she doesn't put the finger on Johnny Granger. Not a chance. When somebody's shooting at you, the only thing you see is the gun. You should have killed her too. Inspector Buchanan wishes to see you. Show Mr. Buchanan in, Miss Marlowe, please. I'll do the talking. What is it, Inspector? Do I know you? My assistant, Gregory Watson. Does the name Wayne Hudson mean anything to you? He got in touch, did he? What do you mean? He rang Miss Marlowe. It seems um, he had some man call on him, a confidence trickster of some sort. I'm fascinated. This man was taking my name in vain. See, making absurd threats, saying he was from me, and that... Uh, and that, uh, what, Mr. Nethercott? Well, apparently this man wanted to get in on some establishment the Hudson was opening up. If you get him, Inspector, I'll be very grateful. I don't like people using my name. And that's all? <laughs> that's all. Well, it's not, Mr. Nethercott. Hudson's dead. He was shot twice outside his girlfriend's flat. Good Lord. It looks like a contract killing, and I'm not very happy about it. Contract? Somebody was paid to do it. Did you hear that, Gregory? I wouldn't have thought Wayne Hudson had an enemy in the world. Did he owe you money? No. No, not for two years. Check the books, if you like. <laughs> Your books. Oh, well, if you should think of anything, please let me know. Good day, gentlemen. He's too smug. He's got something up his sleeve. Don't worry. I've got it all organized, including a rock-hard alibi for myself. He's got nothing. Big news? Well, come on, give. Christine Martin picked the killer. 
I wondered why she wasn't still out there. From a batch of pictures sent down from Sydney. This one. Johnny Granger, Sydney Hood. Two convictions for shooting. Were yours adamant? Oh, definite. I mixed the uh, picture in with another 30 or so when she picked it the first time. Didn't phase her. Picked it straight out again. Mm. Did you get in touch with Hammond? He's expecting a call from you now. His office. Right. Hammond. Hello, Dallas. Uh, thanks, Mike. Those pictures on the line? Our witness made a definite ID. One of ours? Yeah. A John Seymour Granger, age... Uh... He's about 30. I know him well. Cool man with a gun. What do you want him for, Dallas? Well, he's done a contract job down here, I think. Any chance of picking him up? Oh, I'm afraid we couldn't go out and pick him up for you, Dallas. Oh, come on, Mike. We want him. I think we could cheat this one home. I'm afraid we couldn't pick him up, though. You don't mean I've got to go through all that extradition, Jazz. Well, we can't pick him up because we already have him. One of the Vice Court boys picked him up at Mascot. They frisked him and found an automatic pistol on him. There's no doubt about you, Sydney coppers. You know, you must worry your suspects into confessions. <laughs> Do you think you can uh, tie him in with the bloke who issued the contract? Well, there's a better chance if I got Granger down here. You'll want the gun we found on him, too. Yeah, how soon? How's the first plane tomorrow morning? Perfect. Who will you send with him? Oh, a mug copper here is due for a trip to Melbourne. Well, don't send some dumbbell, Mike. This bird might get away. I'm sure he won't. Oh, and don't bother to book our bloke into a hotel. We'll, uh, we'll fix it at this end. Um, I'll send Riverton out to meet him. Now, thanks, Mike. I didn't think we could be that lucky. New South Wales Police Force, always at your service. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Everybody. About ten minutes ago. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Ferner. Yes, thank you very much. Riverton, I've been pressing your call button for the last twenty minutes. Twenty? Don't interrupt. When I want you, I want you now, not at your convenience. Sir. Well? While you were speaking to Sydney, I telephoned Mrs. Ferner, you know, the caretaker of Christine Martin's flats. And? Christine returned there and packed a bag. What? And left without telling anyone where she was going. No. Well, that's all I need. Walk in on you, eh? Okay, Mike. 
Go in. What's the idea of all the pity pat on the door? I came direct from the airport with Johnny Granger and his escort, sir. What's the matter with you? Bring them in. Son of a gun, Mike! <laughs> well, I told you I'd send you a mug copper. Well, you had me in. I suppose you were in this too, were you? Only from the airport. Sit down. Well, this should be an easy one. You seem to have a pretty good witness. Yes. The trouble is we can only book Granger on suspicion at the moment. Suspicion? Why? Our chief witness, Christine Martin, has disappeared. Mm. All I could get out of Granger was our four famous words. I want a lawyer. <laughs> You'll have to uh, comply if he asks for it. It's a cinch you won bail, too. Well, if we don't find our witness in a minute, he might just get it. Marvellous, isn't it? We risk our lives arresting an armed criminal, and you can't do a simple thing like keeping tabs on a witness. Oh, Lord, you lot are so competent in Sydney, aren't you? <laughs> You're catching on. Do you mind? No, help yourself. I've got to get into the charge room. I'll be back in a minute. Well, if anyone was to blame, it was me. She fooled me, all right. Promised and all that. All right, you're off duty. Come and join Mike and me for a drink. I'll park the car. Granger. The a lawyer? Yeah. Here's luck, Mike. The best. Join your phone in a sec. That'll be him now. What'll you drink? Oh, you got anything soft? Oh, I hope he's open the fridge. Mike, that gun you fellas took from Granger in Sydney, what do you have to say about it? Not a thing. Couldn't get a word out of him. Get glad about it now. You obviously haven't heard the big news. Our friend, the one I brought with me? Yeah, Granger got bail. I don't get it. I really don't. We tried to get a remand in custody that we could produce our witness, but his lawyer beat us. You should have heard the alibi. According to him, he was on a fishing cruiser with three friends. I suppose they were all looking at a clock exactly at the minute that Fraser was killed. They won't get away, with it? No, I'd bet money on it. Smart lawyer. It just so happens, of course, coincidentally, that he happens to handle several other things for Mr. Nethercott. So Nethercott sprung him, eh? Neat, without being gaudy. Better say pass this time. Not likely. Now listen. Yeah? Suppose we had no witness. We'd have to start off afresh. Yeah, I'm with you. Good idea. What's your first point of call? I'm sorry, Inspector, but I don't know where she is. You are Christine's agent. She told me. Last address we had on her book, she gave me three weeks ago. She went to live with my... Oh, well, you know all about that, anyway. Mm. Did she mention, uh... Margaret, did you have a soda or water? I'll have it neat, Tom. Inspector, I'd like to meet Don Fraser, Wayne's partner. Thank you. Don, this is Inspector Buchanan, Detective Riverton. And what's the financial relationship between you two now? I own half. Why do you want to find Christine? She identified the mugshot of a suspect from Sydney who was arrested when he got off the plane there. Very quickly? When he was arrested, he was carrying an automatic pistol. Who is he? Johnny Granger. Do you know him? 
Why didn't you bring him down here? We did. That's why we want Christine so quickly. And are you going to arrest Nethercott too? If we get evidence, we will. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've poured myself a drink. Can I get you to anything? Not for me, thank you. Miss Hudson, Christine must have said something about where she came from. A mother, a relative, a friend. I'm sorry. I, I can't remember anything. You wouldn't hold anything back, Miss Hudson? It's my brother that's dead. Yes, well, thank you. Don, they're not going to do anything about Nethercott. Mr. Fraser, do you think he was involved? Yes. Wayne telephoned me. He said that Greg Watson had been around, standing over him. Nethercott wanted in on the new Baccarat game. Don, why didn't you tell them? Margot, how could I prove that Wayne telephoned me? At least it would have given them something to go on. I should think you guessed that, Inspector. Yes, but I would have preferred to have heard it from you. Anything else you care to add? No, that's all I can tell you at the moment, for what it's worth. Well, we must be going. If you hear from Christine. Oh, we'll be in touch, you can be sure of that. Good afternoon. You think they'll do anything about Nethercott? Oh, they'd only question him, and that'd give him time. And what time did he give Wayne? I think I'll pay a call on Mr. Nethercott. It'll be a visit he won't forget, either. No, no, you can't see Mr. Nethercott. Mr. Nethercott, he It's all right, Miss Marlowe. Gregory is with me. We don't need you any longer, little lady. You're Nethercott. And you must be the delivery boy, Greg Watson. Who are you? Fraser. Wayne Hudson's partner. <laughs> Silly boy. Don't have to get rid of him, old man. Who do you think you are? I don't take orders from you. And I'll never take them from you. Now get this, Nethercott, and get it well. I'm taking over Wayne's operation. Now, just in case you should get stupid, and import another contract, man. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're a fool, Nethercott. A stupid old fool. You got Granger out on bail, all right. But if you set him on me, him or anyone else, I'll get them first. And then him, saving the peace to resistance, you, Nethercott, to last. And yours will be a beauty. Do you want to hear about it? No. No, get out. Sure. But remember, first the contract man, then him, and then you. And if necessary, that little canary you have in the outer office. Goodbye. Watson, get Granger. Get him. Then get out of town. I know it's here somewhere. I should be able to remember it. She lived in Brisbane with her mother. I know who knows. Oh, sorry, Donald. Won't be a minute. Oh, can't you get it later and phone it through? I would like it now. Grange has been released on bail. You mean you got him and you let him go? Didn't you know, Bernie? They'll probably pay his fare out of the country. What do you mean by? Hello, Kel. Bernie Chapman. Yeah, fine. Listen, do you remember when you stage managed that variety show? Do you remember a looker by the name of Christine Martin? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I want her address. No, 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 not that one. No, she moved there about a month ago. No, this is her mother's address in Brisbane. All right, yeah, fine, I'll wait. He's digging it out. He'll have it in a moment. I'll see you in my office when you're through. See who it was? No. 
wouldn't stand in front of that window if I were you. You might be mistaken for someone else. Do you want this address? Yeah, thanks. Oh, she could be there. It's a jumping off point. All right. Have Brisbane check it out. Oh, well. It's your actual 38. Did Fraser have anything constructive to say about it? Fraser doesn't have anything constructive to say about anything. He has smart comments to make. Mm. I don't like the sound of that much. We've got nothing on him here, but somebody thinks he's important. All right. Have ballistics check it out. I'm going to look up some contacts and see what I can find out about our Mr. Fraser. Can you come in? Be right with you. Do you want to talk about auditions? No, that. Get it fixed. The man will be here in the morning. Anything else? Yes, Wayne's car. Where is it? Well, I've got the keys. Six o'clock now. Pick me up in half an hour. I want to use the car tonight. What time is it, Bernie? Five minutes ago, it was five to one. It is now one o'clock. Oh, I guess I'm turning into a bit of a nerve, eh? You turned it me into one. Oh, you've been one for years. Yeah, and look where it got me. <laughs> oh, why isn't Don found? Why, should he? Bernie, don't be like that. I just want to know what's going on. Where is he? All I know is I dropped him off to pick up Wayne's car and he drove away. And I'm getting tired. Go to bed. I'll, uh, I'll stay up for a while. Good morning. They picked up Christine Martin in Brisbane last night. Frightened and ran out to mother, eh? Yeah, they're sending her down by plane. I've arranged for a car to pick her up. I suppose you've also arranged for a car to pick up Granger and bring him for the lineup? I have. Good. Ranger, are you up yet? <gasps> you know the gun you fellas picked up on Granger in Sydney? Ballistics came up with a big fat nothing. Bullets didn't match. Oh, he probably picked a gun up in Melbourne. Going as a bargain, couldn't resist it. Could be if it's not the murder weapon. Buchanan? Yes, I've made it out of it. Thank you, Sergeant. That was communications, Mike. Granger's body was found in a motel suite less than 20 minutes ago, shot to death. Your pills, Mr. Nethercourt. I'll get you some water. Well, it's a beautiful job. If beauty can be said to apply to a situation like this. Yeah. Miss Marlowe. Call, Inspector. Yes, you said that Mr. Nethercott often received parcels like this. 
Uh, uh, careful not to touch the desk. Uh, yes, you could say quite regularly. You see, they contained new issue stamps, pamphlets, catalogues. Was there anything different about this one that you noticed? No. Just the weight. Weight? Well, it was heavier. Much heavier than any of the others that Mr. Nethercourt had previously received. Good, thank you, Miss Mallard. Morning. Morning. Back from breakfast? No, thanks. What time did you get in last night? I was worried. Uh, about one. Funny. I didn't go to bed till three. What were you doing? I'll tell you in the car on the way in. Granger murdered. Never got blown up. Somebody had a busy few hours. Yeah. Granger got back before midnight. And somebody shot him twice. Yet, no one, nobody heard anything, nobody saw anything. I'd say there's two silences in town. Mm. Where's young Kim? No, he's around. Well, somebody was keen to get Granger. Got a suspect? Have you? Yeah. A Mr. Donald Fraser. Doesn't ring a bell with me. No, that's all I can tell you, Inspector. Oh, except I did have a run-in with Nethercott yesterday. Nethercott? Oh, come off it, Buchanan. Nethercott was blown up. We all know that. His name hasn't been mentioned yet. Neither has Johnny Granger's. In this business, the word does get round rather quickly. Yes, it does. Where were you last night, Mr. Fraser? Wayne Hudson's house. All night? All night. Who was with you? Margot Hudson. We'll check that. Oh, she's in the outer office. I'll call her. Margot, will you come in? Margot, the inspector wants to know where I was last night. With me. All right. All night. You're sure? I mean, he could have gone out after he went to bed. I said all night. I see. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Hudson. I'll show you out. Just what do you think you're getting yourself into now? Margot Hudson backed him up, eh? Well, I thought you would. <laughs> All right, get in the car. Eh? Get in the car. I think Riverton wants to talk to us on the quiet. Ah. I've tapped every source available. Hmm. It's about Fraser. I had Riverton throw it in there see what he could find out. Fraser was a merc. A what? A mercenary in the Congo. And the word is he came out of there with more than just his pay packet. He's a killer. Well, he had to be to be with that lot. Has he been in jail? No, no. The stoolies are adamant on one thing. He's never done time in stir. Any word on Granger or Nethercott? No, the underworld leads don't point to them. All right, who do they point to? Gregory Watson. Look, I'll audition them, then I'll tell you who I think. Oh, for heaven's sake, Bernie, they're only ballet girls. They need to make a production <laughs> out of it. Well, the police have gone. What's eating him? He's jealous about your alibi. Oh, we've talked about getting married once his divorce comes through. Well, surely you can do better than that. Mm. He's a nice little bloke. I don't want to talk about it. Sure. Anyway, uh, thanks for the alibi. I only wish it were true. Well, it might have been a couple of years ago. 
I'm glad about Nethercott. I loved Wayne. Yes, well, I'm afraid there's a little more to it than that. Dr. Hahn, don't go making more problems for yourself. <laughs> problems? I've got enough problems fronting for the things I did do without taking the rap for something I didn't. Leave things as they are. Are you kidding? Hello. Inspector Buchanan, please. Oh, look, I'm still watching the Watson plates. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Oh, listen, uh, it's one thing, I had to take a shot at somebody. Yeah, well, um, somebody was climbing over the back fence and I called on him to stop, but he took off. Yeah, I got him in the right hand, I think. Oh, damn fault. I got careless. Well, it is only a flesh wound. It'll be sore for a few days, sir. Oh, this will teach me never to do things by halves. Bernie, in my overcoat pocket. My gun. Load it for me. What did you take to Watson's? What is that? A hand grenade. Going to give Watson a little of the same he gave his boss. I told you to get my gun, Bernie. What use is a gun to you with one hand? Only need one. Get it. Darling, you're going to stay in this little game too long. I've been in much tougher spots than this. Thanks, Bernie. I'll load it. Do it. If you can't load a gun, Don, how are you going to drive a car? Watson will have to pay a visit to Nethercott's office. Well, it could be police, then. I'll hang around until they've gone. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, just one more favor. What? I want you to drive me to Nethercott's. Can't hang around here. Buchanan or one of his boys might show up at any moment. I'll drive. I don't want Bernie involved. I'll drive. was uh, getting his own back on me. I heard the trigger clicking and I gave me time to get round to the drawer in the back there. Mr. Nethercott always kept a revolver there. Did the gun keep clicking? I don't know. I don't think so. I got a shot at him. That's where he fell. Come off it, Watson. You had the gun on you. When we left this place, there wasn't a gun in it. This gun hasn't been fired. Another strange thing. He was going to shoot me, I swear. It's been loaded with used shells. You've got nothing on me, Buchanan. I've got enough. It was self-defense. Well, the way I see it, Watson, it was very simple. Fraser was running wild. He saw an easy chance of taking over the whole operation. First kill Nethercott, and then make sure Fraser got the blame. Inspector. Inspector, I wish to make a full statement. Don't listen to her. The whole thing was her idea. She put me up to it. I shall make a full confession as to any misdemeanors that I might have committed. But believe me, Gregory Watson is to blame. That is the truth. Come on, Watson. You're going to listen to that line. On your feet. She, you can't believe a word she says, Inspector. She wants to put the whole blame onto me. Save it for the court. It goes for you too, Miss Marlowe. Come on. <laughs> 